Nick, I doubt if you saw many obese horses uh, in Santa Anita last weekend, but uh, um, I suspect it's a much bigger problem than perhaps many of us realised. Clearly, obesity is a, a serious a problem as emaciation, as we've seen, and the panel will be able to talk about this in mu with much more knowledge th than me, but you don't have to be a vet or an expert on horses to understand that obesity in any animal is going to put a massive strain on the heart, the lungs, a cause of serious laminitis. I mean, from a racing standpoint, it's much less of a problem than it, than it was. You hardly ever see obese racehorses on the, on the track. I mean, you, you hardly ever see a horse that needs the run now. Training methods have become so much more sophisticated. Trainers have become so much better versed in getting horses fit. And Paul Nichols, in his column in the Racing Post the other day, said how he, he now encourages owners not to leave horses out at grass in the summer too long, because if you let these athletes put on too much weight, then it poses a real problem, puts too much stress on their on their legs and their heart and lungs and so forth when they come back into training. So the awareness is better and you need a, a high level of competence required by the BHA to be a trainer and people are better educated and there's generally good practice and the importance is trying to educate people in, in, in good stockmanship, uh, not trying to be elitist but you just need a clear educational message in every publication and on every television service that deals with equestrian sport to tell people about what an obese horse is. In terms of the showing world, where I believe this is more of a problem, I can't talk with authority, but as far as aesthetic issues are concerned, we've got to stress the message that we need to value the, uh, the horse, the equine, as an athlete, not as something to look at as a thing of, of beauty necessarily, but as an athlete. The horse is a working animal, and it is an athlete, and has been for two and a half thousand years, and I think we need to emphasize the value of function over form. Yes, good point. Sandy? Well, I think we've come to this problem like we've come to it in humans and dogs, uh, and, and the solution really is awareness uh, and education. There's increasing uh, awareness of this. that We need more research, and I would say that, wouldn't I? But uh, we're just beginning to see prevalence start emerging how common this problem is. I think we need better ways of measuring obeseness because the actual fat content may not be reflected in the, the actual look of an animal. Um, and, and then we need to um, get the message out that this is not beneficial to the animal's uh, health. And again, there are clear linkages emerging from epidemiological studies of obesity to insulin resistance and to things like laminitis. And I think once people understand the real consequences, then they will take appropriate action. Richard? I, I think the, the best method of, uh, of assessment is obviously a, a, a scientific approach to it, but the best method is, is the Mark I eyeball. And that can only be, that can only be uh, an accurate guide if the person has an element of understanding. And just as there is this big campaign on companion animals, as we all have to call them now, uh, 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 that, they get, uh, that there is this you know, growing problem with obesity in dogs and cats, that, uh, that there are people who think they're being kind to a horse by overfeeding it. A and nothing could be further from the, from the truth. And they have to be, under have to be educated uh, through, and uh, not only breed societies, but sh shows and uh, all sorts of organizations can, be, can play a part in this, in developing people's understanding that firstly, it's a deeply cruel thing to do. Uh, it, secondly, it massively, it, it makes performance incredibly difficult to get a horse back into being the athlete that Nick was talking about. Uh, and, and thirdly, that uh, you are consigning an animal to a really miserable end if it becomes an irreversible case of laminitis. Thank you. Mom, I, I was going to say, Nick has highlighted showing, and there is no doubt about it, it is one element of the sport, and I'm probably going to get lambasted, where to have a horse uh, on the Moraby side, it is part of what it is. What about sales and things like that when you're talking about uh, youngsters? Well, we, we were just uh, talking about that. that, that there was certainly an issue, I think, in the past. It may not be so true now, but preparing um, yearlings for sale, certainly in the States, I think it was a particular issue, did create long-term problems um, for us because they failed to take into consideration just what adding weight to a young frame did to the bone structure, never mind anything else, and they, they tended to have real bone problems. The overweight issue goes, I'm sure it goes back a bit earlier than that, and I think it goes back to a general attitude of ad lib on demand feeding, and you can apply that to almost any livestock, human or otherwise, that you can think of from an early age. And if we really do believe 
that it's kind to say yes to every time it wants to eat more, have something to eat, then we are doing them a disfavor, whether they're human or animal. And it's at the early stages that we really set the tone. And, the, and if they get overfed as youngsters, and some will be naturally greedy, and if you put more in front of them, they'll just eat it. Uh, and we have that part of the equation we've just got to learn sooner rather than later. Um, thank you. Time for perhaps a, a couple of quick comments on this, because this is another interesting one, which perhaps is rearing its ugly head more now. There's one at the back, if we could take the radio mic there, please, if we could. Thank you very much. And is there anyone else who'd like a quick comment in a moment? If you put your hand up. Um, Dr. Teresa Hollands from Dodson Horrell. Um, we've recently been conducting epidemiological study together with the Royal Veterinary College that's been supported by ourselves and um, the Horses Trust. And we've been trying to define obesity in the same ways we have with humans, where there's enough fat on the horse to cause um, health-related problems. And what we found is that 30% of the horses are actually obese. But when you break that down to horses and ponies, 47%. And our definition is um, a fat score of over three and a half. Because what that's shown is that we've got a six times greater risk of laminitic and foot-related problems two and a half times greater risk of skin problems and three times greater risk of musculoskeletal health-related problems. So the work is starting to be done, and I think it is, as you say, very, very important we try and get that information across to the public. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. No one else like to make a comment? Just one more, and yours will be the last, if we may. Down the front here, on my right. Yes, Georgie, it's, com Georgie, it's coming. Um, I've shown for years, and I think showing is one of the worst offenders. Um, I have two show horses who are 19 and 23 and still going strong, so I can't have done too much wrong. But I think the professionals, dare I say, are the worst offenders to cover a lot of faults. And I think if you look at photographs of 20, 25 years ago, the horses were completely different, and they would look thin today in the show ring. So I think it's got worse and worse over the years. And it must be very difficult for... Uh, amateurs coming into it, because you see every week pictures of professionals in horse and hound with overweight, particularly cobs and hunters, and I really do believe that. Georgina, thank you. Perhaps another message to go away from uh, our World Horse Welfare Conference. Well, I think you will agree, ladies and gentlemen, we've been very, very privileged indeed to have uh, wise words from your pal, so may I, on your behalf, uh, thank all our panel. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, gentlemen, for your wonderful input. And may also thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one, for your questions, and two, uh, for the comments. We would have loved to have more. I suspect we could have gone on a lot longer, but uh, thank you very much indeed. It's certainly been a very interesting uh, 45 minutes.